Okay, so for factoring binomials, we're going to be factoring what are called perfect squares or difference of squares. So it's when you have a perfect square minus another perfect square, then you can factor it into x minus y and x plus y. What happens is, is that this times this will give you x squared, that will give you positive xy, this will give you negative xy, and that will give you negative y squared, and these two terms will cancel each other out, which is why you only have x squared minus y squared, okay? So once you identify what is being squared here, you just put it in the front of the parentheses. Once you figure out what is being squared here, you put it in the back of the parentheses, and then one of these guys should have a plus, and the other one should have a minus. And the order does not matter. You could write it as um, x plus y times x minus y, and it's still the same um, factorization. Now notice that there is no factoring pattern for a sum of squares. So if you get something like this, you cannot factor it. This is prime. Don't even bother trying, it's not gonna work, okay? So let's use that concept to factor these problems here, the difference of squares. And we only have three problems. The rest of them were any, not like anything that we need to be doing. So the first one here. Can I identify what is being squared here so that I know what to plug into my formula? Okay. So here I notice that 8 times 8 is 64 and r times r is r squared. Here I notice that 7 times 7 is 49. So that means in the front of my parentheses I should have an 8r and in the back of my parentheses I should have a 7 and then one of these factors should have a plus and the other factor should have a minus. And that's it. You can multiply this out, combine your like terms, and you will get the original. Here it's a little bit more complicated, but it's still the same thing. So what is being squared here and what is being squared there? I know that 13 times 13 is 169 only because I've seen it a lot. But if you don't know, um, you know that 12 times 12 is 144. And since this is bigger, you're going to have to go bigger. So 13 times 13 is 169. So this is 13 squared. And then what gives me u to the 6? Well, u cubed times u cubed, I would add the exponents, that gives me u to the 6. Here we already know that 12 times 12 is 144, and this would have to be v squared, because v squared times v squared, you add the exponents, you get v to the 4th. Okay? Now, that means 13 u cubed and goes in the front, and then 12v squared goes in the back. One of these should have a plus, the other should have a minus, and this is the factorization. You can multiply it out, combine your like terms, and you should get the original. Now, notice that even though this has cubes and squares, they both have to have squares and a minus sign. So this is obviously not going to factor further. Here though, I do have a minus and a square, but this doesn't have a square. So you can't do the difference of squares again. Here, let's see, what squared gives me these guys? I know nine times nine is 81, and we know y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. So that means I'm gonna have y squared in the front, nine in the back, one with the plus, one with the minus. This one we know is prime because of the plus. This one though has a squares and a minus. So this one can still be factored. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what will it factor into? What times itself gives me y squared? y times y gives me y squared. And three times three gives me nine but you have to write one with the plus and one with the minus. And so now this is the final answer there. So you have to make sure that you factor it completely 
as much as you possibly can factor it before you stop.